Hello beautiful people. So today we're going to learn how to use the rotary evaporator. First thing first, we're going to turn on the chiller. Uh, and to do that, we just need to press this button here. Now the chiller is set at 2 degrees and the temperature of the, uh, of the bath, of the, of the liquid inside is uh, now 11. Before using the, um, the instrument, we need to wait for the temperature to, dro to drop. Around two, at around two degrees. Now I'm going to explain you the setup quickly. Uh, this is the rotary evaporator. It's composed by a splasher that will capture any solvent that might bump up because of the, uh, of the process. Uh, there's this coil that will recondense the vapors that will be recollected collected into this round bottom flask here. There's a, a water bath that we use it to just warm up normally at around 35 degrees. If you need to remove water, we can turn this up to 50 degrees roughly. Just make sure there is always a good volume of water inside that doesn't evaporate. And uh, uh, make sure if you need to use higher temperature that the molecules containing your solvent are not thermally unstable. And then we have the pump uh, over here that will uh, lower the pressure so we can actually distill out our solvent very easily. Uh, now the temperature of um, the chiller is 5.1 degrees, which is enough for rotovapping water. That is what we're going to do now. However, uh, if you're rotovapping volat uh, volatile organic solvents such as dichloromethane, uh, diethyliter, acetone, you want the temperature of the chiller to be really at 2 degrees, so you will need to wait a little bit longer. In this case, uh, now I'm going to attach our, um, our flask, so this contains water, and we want to rotavap it off. So here we have our glass connector. You want to attach it here, make sure it's nice and attached, and use the clamps for safely keeping holding it there. Next thing that you want to do is to turn on the rotor vapor. The main switch is down here. And then you're going to turn on the water bath. You want to regulate it for water at around 50 degrees. You want to lower the flask into the water bath. In order to do that, you use this handle here. And you turn on the spinning motion. You want a nice and fast spinning, such as this one. Last thing you need to do is to turn on uh, the membrane pump. Main switch is down here. The pump turns on by pressing this button here. Okay, now in order for the pump to enter in, in function, you need to press the start button that you can hear from the noise. Next thing you want to do is to lock this valve here. And as you can see, the uh, low pressure builds up inside the instrument. You can see the pressure here in this display. You want to keep an eye on your solvent here. You don't want that to uh, bubble too vigorously because otherwise the vacuum can suck it in. But that's why we have this pressure here to block, to prevent any solvent to directly enter into the main chamber of the rotary evaporator. So that's why you want to hold your finger in the valve there and be ready to release the pressure if your solution starts to boil too much. It's very good practice before starting to use this instrument to give a nice wash to the splasher in order to avoid contamination of your compound. You need to patiently stay here and reduce the pressure manually for a little bit until the system goes to equilibrium. At that point you can safely close the main valve. Again, stay here for another couple of minutes in order to avoid, to make sure that everything is fine and your solvent 
your solution is not boiling too vigorously. Okay, the system is now at equilibrium. Our water solution is boiling and the vapors are now recondensing inside the collector flask, as you can see. So when the operation will be uh, completed, this is what you need to do to uh, switch off the instrument and remove the flask from the rotary evaporator. First thing, you want to turn off the spinning and lift up the flask from the bath. Now we can turn off the rotary evaporator. We're going to turn off the pump, the main switch, and now we're going to vent the system. Hold your flask. Wait until pressure is stabilized. And now you can remove your flask carefully. And finally, you want to turn off the chiller. So you have now learned how to properly use a rotary evaporator. Thanks for watching.